Hello makers and welcome back to another vlog. If you are new here, a special welcome to you. I'm Joanna and this is Stitching the High Notes where each week I share what I am currently making, whether it be knitting, sewing, crochet, cross stitch, whatever my creative focus is that week. And my hope and intention is to encourage and inspire you to nourish your own creativity and to stitch joy or the high notes into your everyday life. How are you? I hope that you are well, that you've had a wonderful week. I am doing well. I have lots to share with you today, some exciting new things, some almost finished knitted projects, some catch up and chatter, and thank you for all of your feedback about my whips episode last week, uh, and a little bit more. So let's get started. Grab your knitting or stitching if you haven't already, a lovely beverage I just made a beautiful cup of tea that I'll tell you about here in a minute, and let's catch up. Mm. Love this tea. So, so, so good. I just sipped quite a bit there in between <laughs> when I said cheers and now. That is a tea made by one of my favorite makers of tea uh, called Magic Hour. I'll leave a link down below. Not sponsored, just I love it and adore it so much. This particular blend is called Taurus. It's inspired by Taurus, like the astrological sign. It's a black tea blend with organic dried pineapple and mango and cacao nibs and cinnamon and all kinds of beautiful things. So yeah, highly recommend it. So first up, let me share my knitting this past week. That was kind of outside of sewing, which I'll highlight here later on. That has been my main kind of creative focus this week. And this particular project, I am ready to join in the round. So it's quasi finished outside of joining in the round and blocking. So this is my falling in love cowl, which I've been chatting about since the fall. I can't remember, I think in maybe October, I cast it on. It's using, first I'll tell you about the yarn here. It's using a beautiful skein of self-striping yarn by Woolens and Nosh in collaboration with Earth Tones Girl. The colorway name is Falling in Love and it's a 90% uh, superwash targi and 10% nylon blend. Uh, and it's beautiful. I love it so much. It's just the perfect colors for fall and it was really lovely to work on and to cast it on, especially during the fall where I was experiencing the my first full season living up in Sacramento in California and watching all of the trees in my new home in these colors because I used to live in the Bay Area, I still work down there, but um, you don't get, there are more evergreen trees down there. You don't get as many, maybe like in Berkeley where I used to live, not in a little bit where I lived in Hercules before then, but really up here, it's a city of trees in Sacramento, city of trees and rivers. <laughs> um, you really get all of these beautiful colors and it's just, absolute joy. So highly recommend the yarn, of course. Um, the little stitch marker here, before I forget, is the Pumpkin Spice Latte by Sucre Sucre Miniatures. I've had this since about 2017, I think. I got it at Rhinebeck when I went there one year. 
Uh, and this is where I was last week when I showed you the whip and the whip parade episode. So I did quite a bit this week. <laughs> it was some wonderful TV knitting. But my inspiration for picking up this particular project and knowing that I would get to a point where I can join in the round. Oh my gosh, y'all. I got, wait, geese, geese break. Oh my goodness. Look. <gasps> Whoa, are those geese? What are those? Wow. It's obviously getting very cloudy here as well, but that was, oh, that was amazing. <laughs> okay, nature moment interlude there. Okay, back to the pattern, so the, or the project rather. So the reason I was inspired to work on this this week was because we actually at work at the opera where I work, um, we launched our, announced our next season. And I've been part of a large team since really working in earnest since last fall. So, oh yeah, the tie to the fall um, to bring this to fruition. And so when we announced on Tuesday, I got, we all got like this high, this release of finally letting everybody know what we've been working on um, and just the cathartic release of joy of creating something and, and sharing it with everybody. And I wanted to keep it going. <laughs> So I, I wanted to keep it going and get to a point where I knew I could kind of feel that vibe again, probably, probably this coming week. A little bit more about it is that I am doing Magic Loop, as you can see, using US size 2 needles, 2.75, I believe. And I'm using my interchangeable Chalgo needles, which I adore and love. I did an initial review on the channel several months ago, sometime last year, um, you know, which you can find here on the channel, but I still love them. They're my go-to needles. And I really wanted to do Magic Loop. You could, of course, do a shorter cable and do fully circular in the round if you wanted. You could do DPNs, but I love the Magic Loop because of the established border kind of line that you get with this um, double-sided tube of knitting. And I also just love Magic Loop in general. That's my preferred way of knitting socks, for instance. Um, so yeah, so that is the method that I did. Now, without giving too much of the pattern away, because it is a paid for pattern, which I don't know if I mentioned, it is Tale as Old as Time by Ann Valley. I've made this pattern once before in 2016 or 2017. Um, it is a tubular cowl. Um, it was initially made for a Beauty and the Beast themed, hence Tale as Old as Time kit that she did um, in collaboration with, with Mustache Yarns, I believe, Mustache Yarns. And there were two skeins of yarn for that, so it was a longer cowl. Love that cowl, I still wear it to this day. So I decided to go with that because I loved the pattern um, and I loved the finished product. Uh, and I was wanting something not socks. I was wanting just like straight stockinette knitting in the fall because it was quite busy. And it's gonna be, of course, a shorter cowl. Now I'm probably gonna be adding on another two inches because this is the amount of yarn that I have left. I'll have to do a three needle decrease, knit a little bit more, and then graft it all together before blocking, which I'll share next time when I pick this up and finish it. But as you can see, it's gonna be a little bit of a, it's a little bit more snug. <laughs> than I thought it might be. Um, but I think after blocking, it'll it'll ease up a little bit, the fabric. It is targy and it does have nylon on it. So it, nylon in it, so it's not gonna grow really. But yeah, it's gonna be a little bit of a neck brace uh, cowl situation. <laughs> but it will be perfect for under a coat, for walks. Um, and really this project in particular, it's not necessarily about having the perfect end product. 
the end ex accessory as long as it's functional and I can wear it I'm okay this project was really a release and reset and a stress relief project initially um, and it still kind of is so it's it's yeah love it so to be continued we'll see what happens this coming week where the winds will take me with uh, what I want to work on but it's so close and so easy to finish so I'm not worried about it that was it for my knitting this week besides that uh, I've been doing lots of sewing which I'll share with you here in a little bit if you're interested about what's coming to the shop uh, a little bit of lifey chat before I already shared that it was a big week at work I did go down and do my mega commute two times uh, a week I go down there on Tuesday and Wednesdays right now uh, and it's just so lovely and the sun's getting up like rising earlier and setting later now which makes it a lot easier <laughs> to commute down there uh, it's about three hours each way so it's it's a mega commute I'm one of the many who have moved up even further north for a variety of reasons but it's so lovely on the train I take Amtrak down um, a line called Capital Corridor and then I hop on a bus, uh, Amtrak bus connection to the city, and it's just really lovely. And it was, um, yeah, beautiful sunrises this week. It was really gorgeous. And then there were a couple of funny moments in my uh, Lyft or Uber ride to work. Uh, it's like plane trains and automobiles <laughs> to get to work, but it is nice. Um, uh, there was this really cute little dog, you know, it's just so it's getting the energy of the city, which is really lovely. I did, um, I haven't been like really knitting or crafting on the train. I've been really reading. Um, January and February are like my big reading months. Um, I don't know why it's just the timing of the way work and life and everything is maybe I'm refreshed after having a break um, so I've been reading um, and yeah so it was just a really nice cozy week I spent a little bit of time with family here and there um, yesterday I went over and just I literally just went over and went to the hot tub because <laughs> my family has a pool and a hot tub now it's amazing so got a little bit of chill time with the fam and chatting with them in the hot tub um, and especially because we knew it was going to be raining I can't believe how dark it's getting so hopefully the lighting isn't too crazy here I have to take some product photos after this so <laughs> hello a little bit of a timey-wimey inserted chat here to say thank you all for your feedback and comments about the whip parade episode last week I just started editing this vlog and realized I neglected to make sure that I thanked you all and wanted to give you some updates on some of the whips. Uh, so I do have a taker to finish my afterthought heels on not one but two of those socks that I mentioned. So thank you all for reaching out and offering to help finish those up for me. And then the second was the I'm in love with an 18th century uh, Scotsman cowl so I shared that I am no longer going to continue with that project but I am going to keep the already knitted fabric because it's gorgeous and beautiful and I want it forever my I my initial idea is to put it into a pillow however so many of you I think like 20 of y'all either on the comments or emailing or DMing me mentioned the idea of continuing the cowl but doing it with stockinette or maybe a garter row here and there to give it some texture um, but to continue it as a cowl so I'm really intrigued by this idea and I think I'm going to continue it on uh, probably just in stockinette um, yeah I think in stockinette I think it might be kind of thin though so I've just got to think through it and because it won't be like double-sided you know necessarily so I'm, I'm thinking about that and if anything I can try to do that if it doesn't work or the far I don't like the combined fabric if you will with the cable pattern plus um, the rest of the cowl then I can tink it or rip it back and then do my initial pillow idea which I'm still kind of loving so Thank you all so much for your ideas. I'm really happy that you enjoyed the whip episode, that it was inspiring 
a lot of you to take a look at your current whips or to cast on new things. So yeah, a fun, a year of whips. Here we go. <laughs> shop news shop update share here it's the first one of the year it's been a while <laughs> i don't think i've had new bags since maybe the end of november so it's been quite a long time and there are some updates to how i'm doing things for the shop this year that i wanted to share with you too so my intention this year is keeping with being present and my word of the year be is to really just share things about the shop once a month with you all usually the day before the update which means on the newsletter and instagram you'll have more of a heads up of the timing of the shop update a little look at what's coming um but really just focusing on sharing things for the shop just once a month just so then it can all be all of the even more fun stuff not that the shop stuff isn't fun at least for me anyway i love it but <laughs> but that way you know it could be focused on other creative endeavors so since it is the last uh, vlog of January. Can you believe it? I wanted to share what I made. So I made two new bag collections to celebrate the end of winter and the upcoming season of love, if you will. Also a little bit of the, the feeling of spring. There were birds this morning, which maybe you might have heard at the beginning of the vlog here. Um, the bird song is starting to return. So I know a lot of us are still deep in winter, summer in summer, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. But I'm starting to feel it. And plus, one of these collections, which I'll just go ahead and share here, is inspired by just something that was just so cementing and inspiring and I really want to do it again this year. I've got to find time to go down to the San Francisco Botanical Gardens because last year I was able to go to Magnolia season. They have so many beautiful magnolia trees of all various, all the varieties you can think of and it was just one of the most magical experiences I've ever had, being able to catch that and capture it. And I started to see the email saying Magnolia season is coming because I joined as a member, member of the garden just to show my support and thank them for everything <laughs> they were giving me. Um, and I found this fabric and I fell in love. It's Magnolias, y'all. Oh, so it's not your typical like super pink variety but a very light pink kind of peach color and oh i love it so much it's got like eucalyptus with it so to me eucalyptus is kind of all seasons but i really think about it during winter time kind of foggy times i don't know why maybe it's just because of um, where I live, when I went to school in Santa Barbara, you know, it was right by the beach. You get the beach fog and all the beautiful eucalyptus trees down there. But yeah, so this is the first collection. I think I'm just going to call it Magnolias. I don't know what I'm going to call it. I'm creating the listings and the product photos later today. I paired it with a beautiful peach, kind of pink, pale pink, peachy linen just really really beautiful so yeah i hope you like it so let me go through the various bag types that will be in the shop we've got the notions bag which is perfect for your notions your tape measure stitch markers um, some people use them for face masks or just odd little things every bag is lined with kona cotton and has my little logo stamp inside and so we got the little notions bags all of the dimensions and everything are on the website oh i should say i probably put it up earlier editor joanna probably put it up there but the shop update will be tomorrow monday january 29th or sorry monday january 30th at 12 p.m pacific time so i'm doing it a little bit later hopefully that's easier if you can capture it on your lunch hour if you're on pacific time or usually like if you're on the east coast it's like kind of break time i know i tend to take breaks like clockwork at 3 p.m if i don't have a meeting so hopefully that's a little bit better it works a little bit better in my schedule as well so yeah so that's when the update is so 
notions bags, drawstring bags, which has a boxed bottom, beautiful channel lined with that Kona cotton. And all of the bags are have interfacing um, that is with like kind of quilt uh, level interfacing. So it kind of stands up like a lovely bowl here, but it also can be squished down. I'm gonna have to iron this for the photos. Can squish down into your commuter bags or whatnot. I like to fold mine down like this. Um, when I'm knitting so then it becomes like a lovely little bowl that was always my hope to create a bag like that so yeah I've got cotton twill little drawstrings there so, yeah so that's the drawstring bag then for needlework and cross stitch we've got the needlework pouch which is made for your kind of standard size 8 by 8 Q-snap um, project it's got two pockets one for your main project here at the top and then one here in the front for your floss card for keeping all of your floss or kind of your different kind of notions your pattern maybe in there and it's got a handle and zipper tabs I hide my face that is the needlework pouch. So I will pause here to say, this is now the one and only uh, embroidery cross stitch focused bag in the shop. The maker's briefcase is now retired. Uh, there are a few left in the shop still, um, but those will be the last ones. And the reason why after thinking about it uh, throughout November and December, um, it'd been kind of percolating in my head for a while is because they weren't really selling. Um, I felt like I could use the fabric and the resources and my time into making more of what has been selling out, which are the sweater bags and the drawstring bags. Um, and that way I can kind of focus more on these cute little guys, which a lot of you all really enjoy. So yeah the maker's briefcase is now retiring my plan is to hopefully write up the pattern for the bag um, and then provide that as an option for anybody that sews um, but that will definitely take a lot of time to do and get tested and whatnot but that is kind of my end goal is to write up that pattern but for now we've got and probably forever we've got the needlework pouch the last bag in the collection, in both collections, is the sweater bag, which I just mentioned, which is kind of like a blanket bag. <laughs> it's a very large bag. It's also got a boxed bottom here at the bottom and a handle and zipper tabs. And it's great for carrying several skeins of yarn, a large sweater project, um, also blanket. I've got like, um, you know, my scrappy shawl, like this is from, I showed this last week. This has got all the 24 skeins and yeah, 24 skeins and my shawl pattern for a shawl whip that I have going on. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, they're really great size. You can even put your other project bags inside of it and use it as kind of like a, a project bag, weekender bag. <laughs> but yeah, but oh, I love the magnolias so much. So that is the Magnolia Season Collection. We'll workshop that there. Oh. <clears throat> and so that is the last bag, which also means there's a, another bag, kind of not really a bag, uh, retiring, and that is the book sleeve. There are several still in the shop, so they're not completely gone forever, but in terms of making new ones, those uh, sleeves are now retired. Again, just would rather use the fabric and the resources and the time to pour into making more of what uh, everybody is wanting. And also I will point out, I did crunch numbers because I'm sure you've been hearing this like myself, you know, we're in a time where inflation and cost of goods are going up. The cost of fabric has gone up exponentially this past year. Um, and this is my way of keeping costs for right now, as long as I can at the same price point. So that is part of the retirement of some of these bags as well. 
And finally, last but not least, we have the second collection, which is, I have no idea. I think I'm going to call it like, somebody mentioned um, it looks like kind of uh, knitted tulips. So maybe I'll call it knitted tulips, which is this fabric, which I love. It has this like, I'm going to show you real close up here. So it looks like it is knitted fabric but it has various different colors um, and it does kind of look like tulips from far away kind of standing up. It kind of has Valentine's early spring, late winter vibes to it. Um, and I love the fabric that is paired. I must give a shout out to my mom because I bought a different color linen to go with this that didn't look right when I got it in hand. And she was like, don't you have some sparkly gray um, in stock? And I was like, yes, I do. And it works perfectly because of the gray and the pattern. Oh, I love it. And it's, I love me some sparkly linen. So yeah, stay tuned for what the final <laughs> name of this collection is. But oh, I love it so much. I think it's knitted tulips. Just sounds really cool and springy. So we're gonna call that, it's kind of fun, fun play of words. So the drawstring bag, and we've got the notions pouch. We've got the needlework pouch. I think I call this notions pouch, but it's notions bag, needlework pouch. Oh, and I should show you the back. Here's what the pouch on the back looks like. And then we've got the sweater bag. So much fun. Love it, love it. So those will be in the shop as well as a couple of new-ish <laughs> uh, stitch markers to add to the various stitch markers that are already in the shop. One of which I think I've had before, but in a lighter color, um, but this is literally called a Magnolia uh, flower stitch marker. So I bought a bunch of those to put in the shop and a fun little like yarn ball with needles in it um, to kind of go with this knitted, tulips <laughs> fabric so yeah so that's what I've been up to been sewing my brains out it's been wonderful <laughs> and speaking of sewing and photographing and finishing things up that's my creative focus for today which I'm really excited about although I might have to be breaking out some lights here I'm gonna get to it and end this week's vlog here I hope you are doing well you have a wonderful week ahead I would love to hear what you are making down in the comments down below what is bringing you joy if it's cooking if it's taking walks if it's what is inspiring you to be creative and how are you how are you being creative I would love to know so uh, have a wonderful day and week again and I will see you next Sunday bye